Good afternoon, students. Today, we're going to talk about transversals and angle pairs. First thing we want to know is what a transversal is, and then we'll talk about the angle pairs. A transversal is a line that cuts across at least two other lines. Could do more than two, but at least two. It transverses or cuts across these two lines. So we have the line EF cutting across the line AB and the line CD cuts across it. That's a transversal. So we have this one transversal cutting across these two lines. Now let's talk about the angle pairs. When we have a transversal, we form a bunch of angles. We have these intersection points. We have four angles here. We have four angles here. Well, the first things we want to talk about is what vertical angles are. Vertical angles, we actually don't even need this, the third line. The vertical angle is when we have an intersection of two lines. The angles that are kitty corner from each other are called vertical angles. So for instance, angle AGE, and again, this is how we designate our angles, AGE. So I'm coming from A crossing the intersection G, or turning at G and going up to E. So AGE is a vertical angle with BGH. This angle here, those red angles are called vertical angles. Likewise, these two green angles, the BGE and the AGH, are considered vertical angles because they're kitty corner from each other and they're made by the same two lines. So we have two pairs of vertical angles on this bottom intersection, these blue angles and these orange angles, because they're formed by these two lines, and those vertical angles are kitty corner. So that's the first type of angle pair we want you to realize is what it means to be a vertical pair. The next one we want to talk about are what supplementary angles are. Wow, that really went fast. Let's go back. Supplementary angles. Now, supplementary angles um, also are called adjacent angles, but not always are adjacent angles supplementary because the means supplementary, they add up to 180. And what I mean by that, let's be very specific here. If I have two angles, so let's start with these two red angles, angle A, G, E, and angle B, G, E, they share a side in common. They both use this as one of their sides for this red angle here and this red angle here. Their other two sides of those two angles form a line. So if two angles form a line or line AB, they're called supplementary and the two angles sum up to 180 degrees. So those two red angles would be considered a supplementary pair. They're also adjacent to each other because they share that side in common. So we have multiple, multiple supplementary angle pairs in this diagram. For instance, we also have this blue angle here, EGB, with angle BGH. They're supplementary because they form the line that goes from E out through F. So this angle here and this angle here are supplementary. They share a side, and then their other two sides form a line. We also have this green pair that's supplementary and this orange pair that's supplementary. So we have four pair of supplementary angles just at this one intersection point. Then we have four more down here at this intersection point. We have this blue one here is supplementary to this blue one down here. Our CHG is supplementary to CHF. So hopefully that makes sense. If not, you could rewatch it or rewind. The next one we have is corresponding angles. Now this is where the transversal really takes into account that we're going to look at the alternate intersections or these opposite intersection points. Corresponding angles happen to have to be in the same position. So think of this as a corner of a block or an intersection. We have a corner that's on the top left. This red angle here is the top left corner. Well, if we travel down to the next intersection point, we have this corner also that's on the top left. This top left corner and this top left corner or angle are called corresponding angles. They're in the same position. So angle AGE is corresponding to CHG. Likewise, the top right corner, BGE, corresponds to the top right corner of this bottom intersection of DHG. 
So again, we have four pair of corresponding angles. We have the two angles that are underneath and on the right and the two angles underneath that are on the left and then the other two on top that we talked about. Those are called corresponding angles. Now we have what's called alternate interior angles. So now I'd like to think of, think of these two lines that we don't see intersecting as like railroad tracks. We can be inside the railroad tracks or we can be on the outside of the railroad tracks. If we're inside, we're on the interior in between the two railroad tracks. And then to be on alternate sides of the transversal and alternate lines or railroad tracks, we're going to jump across like this to the other track and across this um, transversal. So angle AGH is an alternate interior angle to DHG because they're on alternate sides of the transversal and on alternate tracks. Likewise, this green angle here, BGH, is an alternate interior angle to this angle here, CHG. There are no other pairs of these because the other angles are on the outside and we wouldn't be on alternate sides. So there's only two pair of alternate interior angles. Hopefully this next one now makes really easy sense to you because they're alternate exterior angles. In other words, we don't want to be in between the tracks. We want to be outside the two lines that are being cut across. And again, we want to be on alternate sides of the transversal and on alternate tracks. So this angle here, this red one, AGE, is an alternate exterior angle to this one over here, DHF. Likewise, we have one more pair of alternate exterior angles. The blue angle here, BGE, is an alternate exterior angle to CHF. The last one I want to talk about is what's called consecutive interior angles. Sometimes a lot of math teachers will just say same side interior angles, which actually makes it hopefully easier. Same side just means that we don't cut across the transversal, but we do both interior. So consecutive interior angles would be like angles, if I'm looking at the red ones underneath, this BGH is consecutive to DHG. Think of it like if you were couldn't cross the railroad tracks and you couldn't cross the transversal and you were walking along the inside. As you walk along, you have to turn at this angle because you can't cross the transversal. Then you walk along the transversal and you get to this other track and you then have to turn because you can't cross it. So that means this next angle was uh, consecutive to this angle above. So that's why there's no consecutive angles outside because if you were to walk along the outside of the track, turn at the transversal and go this direction, you'd never run into another alternate or a consecutive angle. So hopefully this will help you with the IXL today. If you do have any questions, feel free to get online and ask.